Hello and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper and today we're unboxing the new four barrel sniper EFI setup for the new engine of the Mustang. If you've been following my previous videos, you know that I had installed the sniper two barrel unit on the 289 that was originally in the Mustang and it had been working great. Unfortunately, the new engine that I have will require slightly more fuel demand as well as the 2300 being required on another project. So rather than jumping units back and forth, I'm going to go ahead and simply replace it on the Mustang with this four barrel setup. So let's go ahead and unbox the four barrel setup and see how it compares to the two barrel version. I didn't do a proper unboxing of the previous Sniper EFI unit, so this is a chance to go through what you can expect in the master kit. So the Sniper EFI unit alone is this box. This is the basic requirements, the wiring harnesses and the unit itself. This box only comes with it if you buy the master kit. This is what provides you the fuel pump, the extra fuel line and the other components needed to do the complete installation. If you already have an EFI fuel pump, return line, all that kind of work done to your project already, you don't need the master kit, you just need the Sniper EFI unit and then to figure out how you need to adapt it to this system. So let's go ahead and crack into the first set and look at the Sniper EFI unit. These are the main components of the actual Sniper EFI kit. You have the gaskets for sealing it to the manifold and to your air filter. You have the actual Sniper EFI unit itself. You have the primary wiring harnesses, and then you have your sensors and miscellaneous other wiring. So within the sensors box, you have your auxiliary wiring harness, which I believe this one is for controlling electric fans and other auxiliaries that most people don't necessarily have. You have your O2 sensor, which you'll want to put somewhere safe because they generally don't like being dropped or banged into things. You have your touchscreen control unit. That's what you'll do your tuning from. You have your unit for reading your tachometer signal. And then you have various clamps and connections along with the coolant temperature sensor. So this gives you options on whether you want to weld on an O2 bung or whether you want to use the clamp on style. I can tell you from experience, if you have pretty small exhaust, the clamp on style is not going to work. It needs enough diameter to the pipe for the clamp to stay mostly round. If it's a sub two inch pipe, you may run into a problem of it breaking your clamp because it gets out of alignment. As you can see here, the master kit component is consisted of the fuel injection line, the fuel filter, the fittings for connecting the line to the filter to the injection system and back to your tank, as well as a pre and post fuel pump fuel filter. Generally speaking, these fuel filters will be two staggered micron settings. One will be about 80 to 100 microns, one will be about 30 or maybe even less on micron filtration. The smaller filter generally goes after the fuel pump and is there to catch really fine particles that made its way through the system. You will also have all the fittings necessary to combine and add a return line to your fuel tank with this AN bung. Essentially what this kit expects you to do is drill a hole back into your existing fuel tank, put that bung fitting in place, and then connect your line to there to return into the tank. It's not an ideal setup. If you have the time or the means, you would be better served to add a proper fuel return, as ideally the fuel return should go near the bottom of the tank and provide enough distance between itself and the pickup to not cause cavitation or bubbles for the pickup. This entire setup in my case is for the other project that is taking the old two barrel setup from the Mustang. I have no fuel injection system in that car at all right now, and this will give me a lot of parts to pick from. Ultimately, you could probably piece this together for a little cheaper than buying the actual master kit with everything included, but they do supply some good fittings and some good line with this unit, and the fuel pump they send with it is actually really nice and quiet. So I think 
this is probably a pretty good way to go if you don't have the time to filter through all the parts yourself. So now let me go find the two barrel unit and let's compare the two barrel and four barrel side by side. With the two units side by side, we can immediately see some very obvious differences besides simply the number of fuel injectors. So when dealing with these Sniper EFI units, when it says two barrel versus four barrel, it literally is an increase in the number of injectors available. You also have a significant difference here in the way the fuel is delivered. So looking at the two barrel setup that was installed previously, you can see that the fuel hookup in the front for the fuel pickup is on the left and the return is on the right. Looking at it in this orientation, this would be the front of your engine and here are your throttle linkage connections. So anyone looking at the front of your engine would see the fuel hookups and these wires on the two barrel unit. These wires here are required for the IACV for the idle control and other required componentry that you have no option to move. On the four barrel unit, the fuel hookups are in the back with the fuel feed on the left and the fuel return on the right. So it's completely obscured by the body of the unit. So I would definitely give visual appearance points to this unit. Now considering what you're actually buying these for, which is fueling an engine, you need to size them appropriately. There is a minimum amount of horsepower you should use each of these units for. And in the case of the other project that will be taking this unit, it's not going to have hardly enough horsepower to barely meet the minimums of this in all likelihood. Whether or not you're using a carburetor or a fuel injector, you have to understand that minimums still apply just as much as maximums do. Just like you can overcarb an engine and end up with it never being able to be tuned properly because the carburetor itself is simply too large, you can have the same problem with a fuel injection system where the minimum duty cycle for your injectors to have them effectively working is simply too much for the engine. Just like you can have too much demand for the engine outpace the total capacity of the injectors. So sizing matters a lot. On a smaller application, regardless of appearance, you're still going to want to go with a properly sized two barrel as opposed to a four barrel. Now in my application, this four barrel will be a lot better looking on my new engine as well as be a very safe buffer from the maximum and the minimum horsepower requirements. Whereas this two barrel would have been getting closer to maxed out with my new engine, but will be perfect on this other smaller engine's application. So let's go ahead and get to looking at dropping this back into the Mustang.